Hey everybody, this video is called What Does It Mean to Reap What You Sow? And tonight we're going to do a standalone study on a topical video where we're going to look at a popular passage that many people take out of context today. And we're going to look at the surrounding passages to see what is the purpose of the verses. Does it mean what others think it means? So Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 through 8, it says... Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. And verse 7 is one of the most popular verses in the Bible that is uh, taken apart out of context. And it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will weep also. For he who sows his flesh will of the flesh reap reap." corruption but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life so one of the ways that people take these verses out of context galatians 6 7 and 8 is they are out there you know being like see this is karma this is speaking about karma you know what goes around comes around we we all know that saying and there's other people who take these verses in a prosperity gospel sense, and they love to use these verses and saying that if you sow fifty dollars to my ministry today, then you're gonna reap tenfold or whatever. But you know, you're gonna reap a hundredfold. And to do so in karma or, pro or prosperity gospel, it's to butcher the context. And we're gonna look at the beginning of the chapter here, Galatians six one and two. It says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So you must always read the surrounding context when you want to pick your favorite Bible verses in the Bible. And these verses, they speak of individual responsibilities of personal actions and gentleness to others when they are struggling or when they fall or fail and gentleness to others is an expression of love and it's fulfillment of the law of christ and the next three verses verse three through five it says if anyone thinks of himself to do to be something when he is nothing he deceives himself but let each one examine his own work and then he will be he'll, he will have rejoicing in him alone and not in another for each one shall bear his own load so we must focus on self with our work and we must realize accountability to carry one's own load and paul is speaking of what it means to be living by the spirit which is what he's talking about in the prior chapter in this letter. And I want to look at Galatians 5.13. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love to serve one another. So the Apostle Paul, he shows that life in the Spirit will mean a life of serving one another. And all of Galatians, when you read the whole book in context, he contrasts the way of the flesh with the way of the heart. And Galatians sits sit says to, pro to provide for those who teach. So yes, in a, in a way it's talking about taking care of those who overlook you in spiritual sense, you know, like pastors, elders, all that. And yes, financially is one way, but there's much more than that. And Paul is not focusing on a prosperity gospel scheme. He is talking about taking care of one another so prosperity gospel abusers they have it wrong and read verse 8 it said for he who sows to his flesh will reap or he who sows his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life so in verse 8 paul's mindset isn't about the temporal things of this earth it's an eternal mindset it's about eternal life and the final judgment in his focus and 
when you read past verse 7 and 8, you continue on. Verse 9 and 10, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So we can become weary in doing good. And the Apostle Paul is encouraging the church of Galatia that even if it seems like the healing doesn't come right now, or, you know, the, the reaping comes right now, it's an eternal sense. And, you know, we can witness that all around us. I mean, we could be givers and we can give, you know, money to help take care of the less fortunate and everything. And it might seem like we're not really reaping much out of it. But, you know, we, we are building our treasures for heaven. And, you know, likewise, we see people out there that are hurting people, they're scamming people, they're taking advantage of people. And yet it seems like life is going all so well for them. So when we look at eternity, we know that when we are in Christ, that God will reward us. And therefore, we do not have to become wary in doing good because we know there is a bigger future ahead of us. And we know that this passage does not teach karma. This passage does not justify church leadership being abusive, trying to get more money out of people by you know, making empty promises that if you give me 50 bucks, God's going to, you're going to reap 500 or whatever such case. So these verses, they should never be used to abuse the flock and they should never be used in other false philosophies and religions of karma. And that's what it means to reap what you sow. So that's going to wrap up this video. I wanted to keep it nice and short, as I mentioned. And I hope that you join me this upcoming week as we're going to start our study in the book of Joshua, uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday. So hope you join me for Joshua. And I hope that you enjoyed the book of Deuteronomy. And hopefully this video is encouragement to you as well. So have a great rest of your weekend. God bless.